3764. Elvis Presley Boulevard. Hit it, Elvis. You got to eat. Welcome to another edition of Elvis Back on Tour. Today we are going to take you to Mobile, Alabama, where Elvis did seven shows throughout the 1970s. What makes this trip so special is we got to tour the building with our good friend and renowned Elvis photographer, George Hill, who was at every show. During the 1970s, George went to 65 Elvis concerts and photographed more than 50 of them, even getting to shake Elvis's hand a number of times. Combining all the shows, George took an estimated 7,000 photos, many of which are well known in the Elvis community. For Elvis's final performance here on June 2nd, 1977, this was George's final time seeing Elvis and the last time he was in this building. We were amazed at the knowledge that George had to share and we are excited for you to hear his story. So George, part of creating this uh, time capsule for you, um, I think it's important that we take in the whole thing, the whole your whole story. Yeah. So take us back to 1970, you're coming here, you'd already seen him at the Astrodome, and so you come in here to Mobile, and you said that this fountain has a special memory for well, you. Well, the thing that our, uh, most of my family was here, as well as some of my high school and college friends, that uh, I ordered the ticket for them. They, they didn't even know it, but, uh, you know, they were tickled to get them, you know. Right. They, uh, it was just a, these guys had never seen them. I'd seen them at the Astrodome, but right. still, it's not like in an auditorium this size, you know. But what I remember us walking around this fountain here uh, a couple of hours before the show, you know, waiting to, I always wanted to get in as soon as possible. And uh, that was before I knew his routine and everything. So right. for all I knew, he was already in the building. You know, I didn't, I didn't yeah. know. Uh, but anyway, we, uh, uh, like I said, my family and some college friends, High school friends, we all walked around out here talking and killing time till they opened the doors, and then we went in and you know had pretty good seats. Yeah. Uh, and didn't you say you had a picture? Yeah, uh, there's a picture of me and two of my friends from Panama City, uh, of us right out here in front of these uh, fountains. Well, if you can dig that up, we'll uh, we'll include it. That'd be kind of cool to, to uh, and then we'll include the photo that we took of you over here and uh, we'll include that in the video so to be you know kind of then and now kind of thing but one thing i want to get before we go in from you is um you haven't been back last time you saw him was in 77 here that was the last time you yeah. ever saw him uh what's the emotion feel like for you coming back we're, we're talking 46 years now yeah so what's it feel like coming back well, it brings back a lot of good memories. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's kind of sad, uh, you know, how everything ended. But right. by now, you know, Elvis would probably pass away anyway. Right. Uh, or he certainly wouldn't be performing anymore. But uh, uh, so mostly good memories. Good memories. Uh, the shows here were uh, were good. Right. Some of them were great. Uh, and uh, so this got a lot of good memories in this area in this building and uh, well I'm so glad we could do this we had when we started talking to you about doing this uh, we had various locations we could have done but I'm glad we did it here because like you said so many good memories here for you and um, the final time you saw him so why don't we go inside and uh, let's let's see if we can relive some of those memories with you. all right You know if it starts coming back to you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is. Long time. Yep. Yeah, I mean, it was like, well, every time, but especially that first time in September of 70, 
I mean, I thought the roof was coming off. And God, it was loud. The Mobile Municipal Auditorium, as it was known in Elvis's day, opened in 1964 and has a seating capacity of 10,112. Between 1970 and 1977, Elvis would perform seven shows here to over 75,000 fans. In its 60-year existence, a tremendous amount of care has gone into the maintenance of this beautiful piece of Elvis history. Many things within its walls still remain, and we can still see them exactly as Elvis did. So, not to leave the Admiral out, this is the hotel that Elvis stayed at while he was on tour in 1970. And we didn't want to come to Mobile and not at least come to the Admiral and see what we could see. Um, but unfortunately, uh, there's going to be really nothing that we can show you. Uh, we went up on the 12th floor, uh, looked around. That is under complete renovation. That's where Elvis stayed. And there's a lot of stories about Elvis being up there on the 12th floor during his time here. Um, nothing to show you in the lobby here. It's like I say, as you can see, Michael can pan around and kind of show you. Um, they've got it all walled off and uh, they're putting new walls in. This would have been the main lobby. And then we can kind of, I mean, there's a couple things here we can show you. Um, you know, the handrails here, um, they look to us like they would have been here. We have no way of you know, telling you exactly that they would have been, but uh, we'll go upstairs and uh, show you uh, the mezzanine level. Uh, we, we did find a ballroom up there. Um, thought it kind of cool, like the lettering over the tops of the doors here, ballroom C. Um, and then this is the, this is a mezzanine level. Um, but again, like I say, unfortunately, Michael can come in here in the ballroom and just kind of give you a look. <clears throat> Having never been in this hotel in those days, we would have no ideas to tell you what uh, would be original. And uh, but like I say, it's part of a massive renovation here. So very little left other than the four walls that make up this building um, from Elvis's time here, but we, we definitely wanted to include the building. Okay, we always like to show you the door that they would bring Elvis in, uh, the venues that we go to. And in this case, here in Mobile, uh, they brought him through this door right here and there are some pictures that exist of Elvis being brought in in June of 1977 uh, for his final appearance here. And a couple things that we want to point out to show you that we are in the exact spot is, <clears throat> if you look at the photo that we're going to include in our, in our video, you're going to see this black brick right here. The top of the car would have come, you know, maybe about right here. And then you'll see an officer standing here and this black brick and then this white brick kind of splits that black one in half. So that, that was one of the key indicators for us. Uh, the door, I believe, was red at the time. And then also in the photo, you'll see uh, some block work over here. And you'll also see a part of this gate uh, in that photo. And um, we always just like to show you kind of where he came in. So in case you come to visit, you'll know where to go. Um, it's been a lot of years. This building was built in 1962 and opened, I believe, in 1964. And um, it's been 46 summers that have come and gone since Elvis came through here for the final time. It has been speculated on exactly where the dressing room that Elvis used is located. With the help of Paul, who you will meet in a minute, he was able to show us the path that Elvis's car would have taken to get in the building and then the path Elvis would have walked to get to his dressing room. So we're backstage at the Mobile Civic Center, and there's a photo uh, that we know was taken in this building in Elvis's dressing room. And one of the things that Michael and I love about what we do at Elvis Back on Tour is when we can do a then and now, and especially when we get it right, when we nail it. 
And so a little bit of research and a little bit of effort and some help with the staff here at the Civic Center, um, we were able to track down exactly where this photo was taken with a fan on June 2nd, 1975. And it was one of those amazing moments. We've had so many of them over the years where you walk in the room and you go, this is it. And so uh, the director helped us uh, locate the room uh, or locate the area where this room was. And then we started going through some doors and we nailed it. And uh, so we just want to point out a few things about the fact that this photo was taken right here in this spot. Um, in that photo, you'll see this woodwork uh, in the photo. This is original, it's been here since 1975, and that's the kind of stuff we love when it's the exact same stuff. So that is one of the key things. And then Michael pointed out that this bump out, if you'd zoom in on the picture uh, that we'll share with you on our video, this bump out, um, that's another telltale sign. And then if you look at the drop ceiling up here, that, that uh, band that holds the tiles in goes right alongside uh, and there's no other room back here like this. And then the other thing is in that photo, you know, people will all the time, you know, they'll find something and they'll say, well, that vent doesn't exist. Well, there's a vent in that picture and Michael found it right here. Um, we, we'll, we'll include a picture in our video where you can see it. I don't know if you can see it in the lighting that M Michael has right now, but basically there's the square for that vent and it's been patented. The vent was taken out and patched over, but you can see where the vent was. So again, one of those situations where a little bit of, uh, you know, a little bit of work, a little bit of uh, research and some help from uh, the people that run the building, that's always key. Uh, they put us in the right spot. Michael did the rest of the work and we nailed it. Here it is. So the director here has given us unprecedented access to the building, just kind of let us really do what we needed to do. And we went around and started looking, you know, backstage at different things. And um, one thing that we found that we wanted to show you guys, uh, and this is the kind of stuff that we love, um, there's a chair that sat right here in that picture of Elvis in the dressing room, uh, taken with a fan. And we always love when we can take you back in time. And look what we found. Now, obviously, you know, not the same chair, but it is the same style. It's the, you know, it could very well have been that chair, but they, uh, they have hundreds of these things here, and uh, we just thought we'd bring it in here and kind of show you um, the exact same thing that was here then. Okay, so to add another layer um, of Elvis's time in Mobile, what we did is we came to the hotel that he would have used in 1973 when he kicked off his June tour. So on June 20th, um, our tour sheets show that he stayed at what was then the Quality Inn. It's now, that building is long gone, that was torn down, and it's now the La Quinta. One thing that I want to point out here, and I want to give a shout out to Michael on this, is that um, this is where a tremendous amount of research, to get it right, this is where a tremendous amount of research comes in because I asked Michael to kind of get a list up. Uh, you know, it's easy to look at the tour sheets and see what hotel and kind of the address, but what Michael does then is goes in and cross-references it. Uh, like last night at the library, he goes in and cross-references, um, you know, telephone numbers, uh, you know, addresses from the uh, city directories. So that's how we can come to an exact location and go, okay, maybe the hotel is no longer there, which that's the case here. The hotel is no longer here, but we know that we're on the footprint of where that building was. So again, the, uh, we run into this a lot um, from time to time in different cities where the hotel that he stayed at uh, in a certain year is no longer there. Many times we get the hotel, like in this case, in Mobile, we're actually staying in the hotel where he stayed. The, the other neat thing that we're gonna do here in just a minute is we're gonna leave here. Uh, a lot of times, I don't know if you guys are aware of this, sometimes the, the show group you know, the band and the orchestra and everybody stayed at the same hotel. Sometimes that was not the case. As in 1973, um, Elvis stayed here at the Quality Inn, and on the other side of town, uh, near the Civic Center, there was a Holiday Inn on Church Street, and that's where the band and the, and the orchestra stayed. So we're going to take you over there in a little bit and show you if, if we can still find it. We're going to show you where the band stayed. Um, but also, I want to point out one other thing. 
there are some videos out there that uh, state that you know Elvis always stayed you know within uh, you know within a mile or a very short distance uh, to the place where he was playing, and I, we have seen this time and time again where that is that is absolutely not the case. There are times where. Uh, that he did stay right directly next to the, you know, to the building where he was playing. But in this example, in 1973, we mapped it out. He was 10 miles away from uh, the, the venue in Mobile. So uh, that, that varies from city to city and from year to year. Sometimes one year he may stay uh, very, very close. Other years uh, he had a drive involved. Another piece of history we want to give you guys is that when Elvis was on tour, a lot of times, uh, we see it on the tour sheets a lot, uh, the band did not always stay at the same hotel uh, as Elvis did. Sometimes he did, sometimes he didn't. In the case of June of 1973, um, Elvis stayed about 10 miles from here at the Quality Inn. And the band stayed here. Uh, and the tour sheets show that they arrived in the early morning hours of the 20th at approximately 1.30 is what the tour sheet called for. And then they had the show that night. So they had to be at the building, which is literally, Mike will pan around, literally right there, um, down just a block. That, that larger structure you see is, is uh, the, the building where Elvis performed. But here's where the band stayed. Elvis was about 10 miles away. And like I say, uh, it didn't happen all the time, uh, but it did happen where the band stayed in a different location. This would have been the Holiday Inn. I think now it's a Quality Inn, but it was a Holiday Inn in June of 1973. So just imagine uh, 1.30, 2 o'clock in the morning, uh, Ronnie Tut, James Burton, Sweet Inspirations, members of the orchestra, all going to their rooms to get ready uh, for the show later that night. So guys, as an extra uh, surprise here in the Mobile Civic Center, we got Paul, who's the production manager here at the building. You've been here for quite a while, haven't you, Paul? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. And uh, he knows a lot about the stage, knows a lot about what has gone on in this building. And uh, so we wanted to turn to him to get a little bit of professional advice because we don't know anything about setting up a stage. And, and when we look at those pictures, uh, as far as the stage was concerned, we were kind of confused because it's like, you know, Elvis was usually on a stage that was built, but here you have a permanent stage. And so when you were looking, when we showed you the pictures from 1970, uh, explain to us a little bit about how you think that that, uh, what they did with that. Well, a couple of things kind of gave it away to me, the location of this, to look at this wood, okay. as well as the plane. But the, above it, you can see the rails and some of those shots you showed. And this is not the same curtain, but they had a curtain up there similar to this. Okay. And then they had these risers on the stage, which we still have some of those same risers, but they're eight feet long, and that's what the band was set up on. Okay. So you could see that the band was set up there, so that gave Elvis about six, maybe seven feet of performance space in front of the band across this wow. per this very permanent stage, wow. the same stage. That's neat. So Michael can come over here and kind of, that's uh, the old, all-time safe asbestos tile. Right? That's the old okay. nine-inch <laughs> asbestos tile from 1964. So you're so we're looking at what Elvis would have been walking on. No doubt. Okay. I have no doubt. That's awesome. And uh, so the risers you say were eight, eight inches eight high. Eight inches high. Mm -hmm. And maybe here in a little bit you can take us back there and we can look at. Yeah, there, there's some up there that, like okay. I said, I could tell by the locking man just the look of them. Okay. Great. Well, Paul, we thank you for. No, no problem. Bringing a little it's, bit of professionalism and showing us how it was set up because a lot of questions, you know, have been asked over the years. Not that it's a huge deal, but it kind of sparks your curiosity when you're going, you know, how did they, uh, we went to Dallas a few years ago and Dallas has the same setup where it's a permanent stage at the end, kind of a lot like this. And uh, so we just kind of wondered how that works. So you just explained it. Came out about eight feet and... Yeah, and I, I was kind of surprised when I first saw it. I says, wow, he did this on the permanent stage. He right. didn't build a stage in front of this. Right. He actually did it on this stage. So then that means that the orchestra that he had, they were crammed back in there. They were just tight. literally across. They had so much width that they could spread them out, but they didn't have much depth. Right. Okay. Thank you, Paul. For sure. It's a pleasure. And from what we've uh, been able to look at, some of the pictures, to the best of my knowledge, 
these risers right here are the risers that were on stage that the band was playing on. Reason I, I say that is because these are the oldest risers we have here. And because of the locking mechanism on them, it kind of is kind of a giveaway to me that those are the risers that were the, the band was set up on for Elvis on that stage. And you said these are eight inch risers? These are right? eight inch risers. And uh, eight we inch got, high. We got a piece of history then here. And you see they've got a little wear and tear on them. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah. Well, thank you, Paul. Appreciate it. You're very that. welcome. Before we started our discussions with George, we wanted to show him the path that Elvis would have taken to the stage. It was fascinating that over 47 years ago, George was in the audience waiting for Elvis to come out on stage while Elvis was walking this very route. And the suites would have been here, J.D. Sumner and the guys right here, Ronnie Tut, you know. And it could be because of the way they had band gear positioned or something like that. Yeah. This or is maybe a, he just likes to enter This is a song. pretty small stage for it's all, a very small all stage. that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They had. It gives me the chills every time.
Tut was a good drummer. Yep. Think of that. <laughs> what um, what afternoon, evening, and what song? Uh, funny how time slips away. Either show is okay. Yeah, George said either uh, evening either show, show of evening. Uh, evening show of uh, funny how time slips away. Okay, so sometimes, like I've told you guys before, we have to really go in and do some in-depth research. And years ago when Michael and I were here uh, documenting Mobile and the places that Elvis stayed at, um, we really had a hard time tracking down the 75 and the 76 hotel. Because um, when we're looking at the uh, tour sheets, a lot of times they're very vague in a sense. Sometimes they'll give an exact address. Sometimes it'll say, for example, something like the Holiday Inn, I-10 at such and such a boulevard. Well, that's, you know, that now you got to go in and you got to look at old, um, you know, historical documents to find out, well, you know, what's that building now? What's the actual address of that building? And, and it, so you got to, involves a little bit of research. Well, that was the case with this hotel. The first time we came here, we couldn't find it. And so Michael and I did a, a extreme amount of uh, research to try to find this hotel because this would have been the hotel that Elvis used in 75 and 76. And I'll give you a little bit of background. On the tour sheets, it just says Battleship Parkway, Hilton Hotel Battleship Parkway. Well, that right there, it's off a of causeway, and this is Battleship Parkway that's just outside of Mobile. This right here is the lane that would have taken you into the hotel. This lane is Horseshoe. You still see remnants of the curb here. This would have been the entry lane coming into the hotel. The hotel entrance would have been right here, and it would have set just like this facing us, okay? With the back of the hotel being back over there where I-10 is. So you got the entryway, this is the way coming in, and this is the kind of like the eerie part that, you know, when we find these kinds of places, um, you know, sometimes they're just fully demolished and there's nothing. Uh, that's not the case here. 
still see the light poles. This was the parking lot. We were told by these folks here at this restaurant that this was definitely the parking lot for the hotel, and they told us exactly where the hotel sat. But this is the parking lot. You can see the remnants of it. There are curb lines that run all through there, the, the lamp poles. Um, you know, that, like again, like I say, this is the eerie part where it's, uh, you know, you see that little, that little bit of history there and then you kind of peel it back and it's, it makes what we do uh, a lot of fun because you've got to search, you know, research this out and find out these things. So again, I'll go back and say 1970, he stayed at the Admiral. 73, when he came back, he stayed over at the Quality Inn that will show you uh, where that building was. Like we showed you, it's gone now. Um, 75, 76, 75, this was the Hilton Hotel, okay? And then it became the um, Jovan in 1976. When Elvis returned in 76, it was under another name um, called the Jovan. And then when he returned in 77, he left this area altogether and put him over in the uh, Sheraton over right next to the Civic Center. So we're about, again, this is another example that Elvis did not always stay next to the building he performed in. We're about, right now, we're about four miles. Um, you gotta go through the tunnel. We're about four miles from the Civic Center. So again, this is all that's left, and this is an example of what we tell you guys all the time, where, um, you know, it's not all gonna go away at once, but over a period of time, little pieces are gonna start falling away. So get out there and look at that stuff, and, um, you know, document it, and enjoy it, and have fun with it. Okay, so we're standing on the lane that um, would have gone around the hotel. We followed this all the way around. Michael can show you there's a curb over there. Uh, you can still see a little bit of it over there. It lines the, um, what would have gone around the back of the hotel. The hotel, based on pictures that we have and some late pictures that we have before it was torn down, the hotel sat right there in that clearing and it was demolished several years ago. But uh, we were able to find some um, parts of the building that were left behind for, for whatever reason, but that was uh, definitely uh, the rebar and the concrete were definitely parts of this building because we were able to still find some remnants of the foundation over there from the building. While we have him on here waiting for the questions, tell us a little bit about this piece of apparatus right here. Well, this is one of the cameras that, uh, the main camera that I used uh, photographing Elvis. Um, probably at least two or 3,000 photos with this camera. So and I also had a telephoto lens, which is not here, but uh, it's at home. So it's a Minolta. It's right? a Minolta, yeah. And uh, I also used an Olympus at one time. But that's the one that, uh, I did about the last two to three years that Elvis toured. Wow. Uh, I used that camera right there. Uh, a lot of good memories and a lot of good photos. I bet. Fun I bet. times. So on June 2nd, 1975, uh, Elvis was doing a show here, and there's a great photo that I love uh, of Elvis coming on stage. And that photo over the years has been reported to have been taken in Huntsville, Alabama. And I know you know the photo that I'm talking mm -hmm. about. Why do well, I, I know that you know about it? Yeah, I took it. Um, yeah, we were uh, about 10th or 12th row right out there. And, you know, they started playing the 2000, you know, I knew. And they had the spotlight on this door right. before Elvis came out. So obviously I knew he was coming out this door. And so I focused it, you know, on the edge of this door, we got a split screen focus. And, you know, when they swung the door up, you know, Elvis stepped out. If you look at it real close, he's just a teensy bit out of focus because I had it focused on the this line. Okay. And uh, 
he walked out, you know, I think he had his hand about like this and, I, you know, snapped the photo and yeah. kept on, you know, taking. Back in the old days, you had to wait till you got home, get them developed and all that before they came out. But that's always been one of my favorite pictures. Yeah, and if it, uh, you and I were talking about it earlier, it, it's, it's my, one of my favorites of him coming on stage because for some reason, something must have happened just before that door opened because he's got a little bit of mischievous look and like he was up to something. And yeah, and I, I love like that, a buddy. slight grin, you yeah, can tell. Yeah, and uh, <clears throat> so what we did is we kind of, th there was some uh, speculation as to, you know, was it taken on that side of the stage or this side of the stage? Well, we just took care of that because you took the photo. But one of the things that I wanted to show you, to show, you know, to, to the people that watch our uh, videos, is we know that it was this door because it's hinged over here on the, on the proper side. And then there's the door handle, exact same door handle that's in that, that's in the photo that you took. And then that brickwork, like mm -hmm. Michael showed. And then <clears throat> just so everybody can see what he was coming out of, uh, his dressing room was down the hall and then to the right, last one on the right. So uh, another mystery solved, and thanks for your help on that, George. Yeah, glad to. Okay, so when we're out here on the road documenting uh, places where Elvis either visited or played or, or slept, uh, we, we try to even take in the 50s venues when we can. And so when we were in Mobile, uh, we were told that this building was a radio station back in the 50s. And the way the story goes, the little bit of research that we have on this is that Elvis was passing through here on a tour back in the day and stopped here and went in this building and gave them a copy of one of his records. We don't know which one, but gave them a copy of one of his records and asked them to play it. And so Back in the day, I guess it was known as WMOB. We don't know if it was if that's what the call signs were then, but that's what's on here now. Cool thing about this for the people that love when people save history, which that's that's us. Uh, this is obviously no longer a radio station. The tower still exists in the back, but a gentleman that we just met has bought this property. And he says he's going to keep the building just the way that it was back in the day, with the exception of all the radio equipment uh, has been moved out of the building that's been sold off. And he's redone it into like a man cave kind of thing. And it, it's so cool inside. And we thank him so much for allowing us to come in and, and, and visit. But um, here it is anyway. So uh, radio station, Elvis may have been here back in the 50s. And uh, we just thought we'd add this other layer of Elvis history. To the center and he'd give the third and last scarf out. I had it down. And we were on the third row, dead, I mean, right in the middle. And the stage was like this, low. And uh, I had told my wife, you know, about all that, but I was taking some uh, video, video. I wanted to get some video of him at the end when he held the cape up. And so I'm, you know, honed in on it, you know, following him back and forth. So when he came back, you know, he went over that side to come back. And when he came back to the center, he reached his scarf out. And, and of course, the spotlight was on him. And all you could see was a hand that went up and he put the scarf right in it. Well, I'm, I had no idea that she would even gotten out of the seat, you know. <laughs> I was still videoing, you know, and then all of a sudden there was a screaming and tussling beside me. And I thought, what the heck's going on? Anyway, when Elvis did the final cape, and I put the camera down and... <laughs> This girl, woman behind Christy, was trying to take the scarf away from her. <laughs> well, I didn't hit her, but I came close. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'll put a stop to that. But I couldn't believe that she had gotten it. She said she, just, she said she just bolted, you know, went up there, and uh, like I say, the stage was so low and all. It was great. Man, yeah, it was a great night. We wanted to give you guys a look at the hotel that Elvis used during his last visit to Mobile in June of 1977. This at the time was a Sheraton and now it's a Holiday Inn. Um, the part that you see up at the very top in 17th floor, uh, that's where the suites were located where Elvis stayed and Michael and I had the privilege of staying up there in the same location during our visit to Mobile. And if you have a chance to come to Mobile uh, we highly recommend this hotel. It was uh, really nice inside and, and just a really enjoyable stay. 
Okay, so as you guys know, uh, here at Elvis Back on Tour, Michael and I work really hard to bring you the best quality content that we possibly can. We're in a city right now, Mobile, Alabama, that is basically a, a perfect city f that allows us to do that. And I'm going to give you a little bit of background as to uh, what framework we use when we go into each city to set up these videos. So what I want to show you right now is <clears throat> a lot of times people ask, you know, how do you guys know, like what hotel, how do you guys know, uh, you know, the floor Elvis stayed on, the suite number, so forth. So I give you a little bit of insight, not too much, because I don't want to give away, you know, all of our secrets uh, as to what we do, but um, I'll just give you a little bit of background as to, uh, you know, how we come about this information. So this is our manual that we use. Uh, we, we've set this up over many years. Um, it contains the tour sheets uh, for the different cities, uh, all the uh, behind the scenes information about the venues, the buildings, uh, the hotels, it'll give you the dates and so forth. And it'll give you like the security information for the buildings, give you the security information for the hotel. So that's basically how we figured this out. So what we do know is when we, we came to Mobile several years ago, uh, long before we were doing the Instagram stuff and the, and the YouTube stuff, um, we came here and we toured everything, um, but we wanted to make a return visit because Mobile is one of those cities that really um, offers a lot when you're trying to um, give layers of, uh, of, of material uh, to you guys. It, it's a city that, I, you know, I told Michael, I said, we've got to go back to Mobile because there's, there's hotels that still exist, there's 50s venues that still exist here, um, there, there's just a lot. So what we wanted to do, as you guys know, we always try to stay when we can. And it's not always possible. So understand, there are some cities where Elvis performed where the hotel no longer exists. There are some cities where the hotel and the venue no longer exist. Uh, you know, maybe Chicago might, might be a good example of that. Uh, that. That venue, Chicago Stadium, is long gone. But not the case here, and not the case in several other cities that we've gone to. You've seen where we've stayed, Binghamton, New York. We stayed in Elvis's suite because we actually had the, the, the room number to his suite. So what I want to tell you is on the tour sheets, for security purposes, a lot of times I have seen some tour sheets and some rooming lists where Elvis's uh, name is on there and the suite number, but that is very seldom can I find that. Maybe some others. Uh, we have some in here. Um, I can't recall the cities right offhand, but there are some cities in there where that information is on there. But I would say 98% of the time in our situation, that information doesn't exist. So, but you can kind of figure it out based on conversations we've had with different people that work for Elvis. You can, and we've been doing this long enough, we kind of know what to look for. Um, so anyway, what we wanted to do is bring you, um, we stayed, on Elvis's floor last night. This is the 17th floor uh, of what was then the Sheraton. It's now Holiday Inn. It's on Government Street. It's listed right here uh, on the tour sheet. So this is where he stayed uh, when he came out of uh, Macon, Georgia. They flew here, and then this is where he stayed. So in this suite. So Michael will pan around and just give you uh, a, a look at the room. What I will say is that um, we're going to do a little bit of footage later on today and kind of show you and you guys will get a really good look at how they would do everything they could uh, to protect Elvis and keep him safe. This, uh, and, and we'll show you a little bit later, but I'll just give you a little bit of insight now. So when you come up to the top floor, uh, we are told that in those days, in 1977, uh, three quarters of the top floor was a, a restaurant. And um, now it's like, uh, it's like a ballroom kind of thing that goes three quarters of the way around. Well, the rest of the footprint has remained exactly the same. You can, it, it would be virtually impossible to change this. So when you come off the elevators, you have to go through a secure door. Uh, so even right now, Michael and I feel very secure because we're not connected to any other part of the hotel other than going through that secure door. So this is quintessential Elvis of there's a you know you come up and you have to come through a secure door um, to get to the part of the hotel where we're staying in and so what makes up that other quarter of this floor is there's a suite right next to us 
connected by this door right here. And then we're in a suite. And then you go through this door. It's connected to a carbon copy of this suite. And then just on the other side of that is the final suite connected again by a door. So that sets us up for a perfect situation where I can only imagine when the guys came out uh, as the, you know, what they call like the forward team. You know, Elvis had one of those too, where just like the president, where those guys would come out and kind of do all of their work, you know, as far as, okay, this, this is where we need to have him because this is the safest place. And in a little bit later video, we're going to show you how when Elvis left this protected corridor, he could go through a door, go 15 feet and be on a service elevator, drop straight down to the first floor. He'll wind up in the kitchen, and we're going to show all this to you later. Uh, he'll drop down, um, if that's possible, I'll say that. Uh, we'll drop down to the first floor. He'd wind up in the kitchen, say hi to everybody in the kitchen. Imagine working that day in the kitchen, and here comes Elvis. And then basically he would go out through the laundry uh, where they do all the laundry and go out the side door to Jackson Street. The limo would be parked there. And he is literally, I don't even think it's a quarter of a mile to the, I mean, literally a, a few hundred yards behind us uh, is the building where he performed. So we just want to give you, uh, you know, just a look. Michael can pan around and, you know, show you the room. Like I say, there are some cities where, yeah, we can actually stay in the suite. Binghamton, New York is one of those cities that comes to mind right offhand. Um, we have done that. We've actually stayed in the same room that he stayed in. But a lot of times, like in this situation, since Elvis's um, uh, actual suite is not listed on that, um, we have no way of knowing. So, but here's the thing. All of these suites are exactly the same. So you're looking at a, it's kind of like a piece of cake looking thing. It's kind of like a, you know, like a slice of cake here is the way it's made because it's round. Uh, so we just want to give you a peek inside and always keep in mind, guys, when you're watching our videos, you know, yeah, the uh, floor plan we know is the same because there's just no way to change it. Um, from a construction standpoint, there, it would be literally, I don't know how you would change it, but um, we are on the floor. Uh, and we'll show you a little bit later how Elvis got downstairs to the limo. Okay, so like we said, we want to show you guys um, how Elvis was uh, kind of in a corridor that was fully protected. Um, a lot of the hotels he stayed in, you know, he'd stay on the top floor, but it was a suite that, you know, people would have had access to that floor, uh, but there would have been security. You know, usually uh, they would hire police on each city to assist uh, Elvis's guys, but uh, basically, this is one of those situations, we've seen this before, where there's hotels that would actually have like a protected type corridor, and we'll show you what we mean by that. So this is the top floor. Um, back in those days, it, was, it was said that um, there would have been a restaurant that's back on this back side here. But basically, once you got to this floor, um, it was either a restaurant or the suites that are behind this door. So we'll show you what we're talking about. So this door, you have to have a key to get in here, as we do. And so basically, you come in here, and this is where the suites that we're talking about. So, uh, and again, Elvis uh, was not listed on this rooming list, as many times he's not. They, they don't put his name on there, or didn't put his name on there for specific reasons. Um, but one of these rooms, uh, they're all, like we showed you earlier, they're all interconnected. So it really didn't matter which one he stayed in. But in 1977, it would have been one of these. And we always, at least I do, because I'm fascinated by this aspect. I think that's what got me going on this many, many, many years ago, was I'm just fascinated by the security aspect of uh, Elvis being on tour. So that's really what got us started in this. And so basically, Picture, if you will, you know, almost 50 years ago, Elvis we knew was already dressed uh, when he got to the uh, when he got to the venue. So he would have been in a sundial suit, you know, June 2nd, and he's coming out of this corridor. This has not changed. There's no way for this to change. This is a center core building, um, so that stays the same. This has to stay the same. So basically, he came out of one of these doors. It was either one, two, or three 
came out of one of these doors and then we know for a fact that his path was through here service elevator straight down terminates on the number one floor and he would go out through the kitchen through the laundry room and exit the building on Jackson Street. Well, this here is a, one of our original spotlights. Uh, they were brought in when the building was built, opened in 1964. It's a strong super trooper. It's the old carbon arc type, so you had to burn carbon rods in it. But this would have been the spotlight that would have been used for the Elvis shows. Wow. This very light along with probably six other ones. Well, once again, Paul, thank you for, for showing us another piece of history here at the uh, Mobile Civic Center. It's a pleasure, thank you. It ain't pretty, but it is a light. I can't believe that thing's burning. Before we left, we wanted to recreate something that George heard and experienced so many times. Out of the many trips that we have been on, this was probably one of the most touching moments we have ever been a part of. We'd like to thank all the staff at the Mobile Civic Center, the Admiral Hotel, the Holiday Inn, the Mobile Public Library Local History and Genealogy Center, and the Bluegill Restaurant for their wonderful hospitality and helping make this trip one that we will never forget. Also, a huge thank you to Derek Phillips for helping us set up this trip. Last but certainly not least, we want to say thank you to our friend George Hill. We have met so many nice and kind people in the Elvis community over the years, and George is definitely one of the nicest. We thank him for making the drive to Mobile and taking the time to share his stories with us, and we are so glad we got to share them with you. If you'd like to learn more about George's photos and how to purchase them, please check the information in the description below. And don't forget to check out part two where we sit down with George for more in-depth stories. That video will be out shortly. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed. Please be sure to comment, like, and subscribe, as well as follow us on all of our social media accounts using the link in the description below.